Hi, Larry Stewart here with ForConstructionPros.com. Welcome to ConExpo ConAg 2020. We're here in the Caterpillar booth with Jason Ramshop, who's the CAT command lead for Caterpillar. Uh, the, the command remote control system is, is becoming more integrated into, into the, the Caterpillar business. Jason, talk a little bit about how uh, that technology is advancing, why it's advancing now, and, and how uh, the company is using it. Yeah. So one of the one of the, the um, challenges that we have uh, around the world is a lot of operators um, are backing out of the business. Um, you know, there's a big age gap that we have uh, now. You know, the older generation it can range from you know between 50 and 60 uh, years of age, and the younger generation um, they, they're not coming through. Okay, so we have a big big gap. So that's one of the the, the challenges that the customers have. Um, another challenge that we have is a lot of safety. Um, you know, on the sites these days. It's really, really seen as a critical point now. Um, a lot of the customers are really looking at the safety aspects of the business. And this is one way, you know, with the command systems that we can really, you know, take the operator out of the machine, um, put the machine into the unsafe area, as we, as we call it, but the, the operator is actually in a safe location off-site or on-site in a, in, a, in, a, in a remote location on the site. I see. What technologies are making this more practical for application now? We have um, you know, the command station itself. Um, you know, as you can see here, a couple of screens. It is live. It is real time. Okay. We also have a command console that we can use, which we class as line of sight. Okay. So you can operate the command console and you can actually see the machine, okay? Yeah. So you can be at a distance. Something that an operator can wear as yes. opposed to a station that they're exactly, sitting in. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But with the command station, um, you know, we actually have been running the machine um, in Tucson, Arizona, and the actual command station has been in Malaga, Spain. So around about 9,600 kilometers away, and the latency is next to nothing, it's real time. Yeah, that's a, an interesting point you made. The, the latency is so low. Is, yes. there, is that, a, is that a, by virtue of, of uh, the, the pipeline getting bigger? I mean, the ability to move data faster? Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's been looked at as a, as a big thing now. And what we've seen is over the last year, year and a half, that this technology is really expanding. It's moving very, very fast. Okay, so we have the capabilities now to be able to really pull the, the latencies down. Um, you know, so it's more or less real time. So when Brad shows you, um, you know, when he actually moves the, the lever or the joystick, the implement moves on the machine. Okay, so it's near real time. Okay. All right, guys, we're here in uh, Las Vegas showing our command technology. Uh, what you're seeing on the screen here is a 930 wheel loader down in North Carolina at our Clayton facility. I'm connected to it here in Vegas, and I'm going to be able to go in and make any kind of changes I need to do within the machine setup. I can set my kickouts for return to dig, for lower kickout and upper kickout. I also have the ability to turn rim control on and off by hitting this green button right here. Turn that back on. For the ground conditions today, I'm going to have it set in medium. And then over here, my directional shift response, I've got it set in medium also. So full capability of adjusting the machine just like if you were in the cab. And over on my right side, I have an implement lock and a park brake switch, so I can turn those off. So we're ready to go, so I'm going to go ahead and raise the bucket up, put the thing in, put the loader in forward with the F and R switch in my left hand here. Go into the pile, and we'll go ahead and get a bucket full of material, just like if you were in the machine. So I have a front camera I'm looking at. Underneath that is a rear camera, and then two side cameras left and right real-time cameras so I know exactly what's going on in that machine just as if I were sitting in the cab. The delay is no different than if you were in the machine itself and now I'm going to switch over here on the left side of the screen to the D6 and this tractor is in Illinois so we're switching from North Carolina to Illinois and now that fast we're in Illinois in a machine live on all three of these machines, this is the exact mirror image of the display that you would see in the cab. So again, I have all the capability of monitoring my health of my machine, my gauges, my fuel. I can start and stop the machine. I can go to high idle, which we'll do right now. And as I reach over here on the right again, I'm going to go ahead and cancel the park brake and the implement lock. And we'll go ahead and start grading this floor out. 
Now really, I mean, other than steering, this machine is controlling the elevation through that grade system very well and very easy. And I can steer back and forth if I need to maneuver the machine to take the material where I need to go. And we'll back up and take another pass. I have foot pedals on the floor here that are controlling decel and brake as I need. Again, two uh, cameras for the left and the right side of the dozer blade, just as if you were sitting in the cab. Actually better visibility than in the cab because I can see down under the blade in front of the idlers just a little better because of the height of the camera on top of the cab versus me in the cab looking out the front windshield. Got a front camera in the left and a rear camera in the right. So we went from North Carolina to Illinois and now we're in Arizona. Again, I have the same monitor system that I see inside the cab. I have control of my RPM range, set that where I want it. I can control my rabbit and turtle travel speed just like I can within the machine. I'm gonna reach over here on the right and take the park brake and implement lock off. And now this machine is active and live and we're gonna go ahead and start digging. So we'll go ahead and park this one up. So within a few minutes here, we have traveled from three states, North Carolina, and we went to Illinois to drive to operate a D6 dozer, and now we're in Tucson, Arizona, operating an excavator that quick. So the, the ability to go from job to job as a single operator with this station is a pretty amazing. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention as I get older, uh, I have noticed now that I'm running remote control quite a bit, my body feels much better when I go home at night. I'm not near as fatigued. I'm not getting that dynamic um, action that I would be having inside the cab. So my back feels better. I'm not as tired at night. Um, if I were to be, and we saw this on some customer jobs already, some of the operators who have injuries, knee injuries, shoulder injuries, typically would have to go on workman's comp. They can now stay at work and operate in the station in a comfortable environment inside the office. And then we also have uh, disability folks that have disabilities, male and female, wounded warriors in the military, folks like that we can now pull from that pool of people to start becoming uh, professional operators as well and, and advance their careers. And then the older guys, like I'm getting a little up in age, you know, if I were going to think about retiring at 60, I could probably work to 70 now if I wanted to. So really, really good stuff. When your dealer services your cat, they know there's a lot more riding on it than just you. Let's do the work.